Hi, you are welcome to my channel and I'm glad to see you again. In today's video, I will be demonstrating how to perform Chi-Square Statistical Test of Independence in XPSS. And I hereby encourage you to watch this demonstration to the end so that you can see and learn how the results are interpreted. My name is Titokan and this is Titokan Max Solutions, a YouTube channel for improving the knowledge of how to do things. However, before I go into the demonstrations, let me quickly give you a synopsis of Chi-Square. Pearson's Chi-Square test, which is commonly referred to as Chi-Square test of independence, is a statistical test that is used to determine whether there is statistically significant association between categorical variables. And this association is usually assessed by comparing the differences between the expected and the observed frequencies in one or more categories of a contingency table in relation to the asymptotic significance level, or p-value. Typically, in a person's chi-square statistical test, you perform the analysis in order to see if you have sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis, which usually states that there is no relationship between the two categorical variables or that the categorical variables are independent of one another. So the simple rule of thumb are 1. The closer the observed and the expected frequencies in the output table are to each other, the smaller the chi-square will be, and the more likely you cannot reject the null hypothesis. 2. The more different the observed and the expected frequencies in the output table are, the larger the chi-square will be, and the larger the chi-square is, the more likely you are able to reject the null hypothesis. So in order to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternate hypothesis, which states that there is association between the categorical variables, there should be a large difference between the expected and the observed frequencies in the output contingency table in relation to the condition of the significance level or p-value. However, to be able to perform chi-square tests with your data, the following requirements must be met. 1. Your dataset must consist of two variables measured at nominal or ordinal level. That is, they must be categorical data. 2. Your two variables should consist of two or more categorical independent groups. 3. The data must have independence of observations. That is, there should be no relationship between the subjects in each group and the categorical variables are not product of pre-test and post-test observations. And four, the categorical data should have relatively large sample size. Now, let's go into the demonstration. This is a nominal data consisting of two categorical variables that describes the smoking status of the male and female in a Wehimi community. As you can see, this data has been loaded already into XPSS. So for this test, the null hypothesis states that there is no association between the two categorical variables. That is, cigarette smoking status is independent of gender. Why? The alternate hypothesis states that there is association between the two categorical variables. That is, cigarette smoking status is dependent on gender. Here, our research interest is to determine whether we have sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis in the purview of accepting the alternate hypothesis. Now, to run chi-square, go to the menu bar and click on Analyze. From the sub-menu, put your cursor on Descriptive Statistics, and from the drop-down options, click on Cross Tabs to open the Cross Tabs dialog box. In this dialog box, click on the Smoker status to select it and then click on this transfer arrow key to move it to the row box on the right. Then click on gender and then click on this transfer arrow key to move it to the column box on the right. Now click on the statistics button to open the cross tab statistics dialog box. In this dialog box, check the box for chi-square and this selection will produce the chi-square test statistics. Since our data is nominal, then check the box for phi and Kramer's V, and this selection will produce the measure of effect size or the degree of association between the variables. There is nothing more to select. Click continue to close this dialog box. Now click on the cells button to open the cross tab cells display dialog box. Here under counts, the observed box is already checked by default. Now 
check the box for expected. And this selection will produce the counts if we were with the case that the two variables were not associated. Under percentages, check the box for row. And this selection will produce percentage of the counts in relation to the observed and expected counts. Then click continue to close this dialog box. Now check this box to display cluster bar charts in a plot. Like this, you have successfully configured the cross tabs feature to produce results of Pearson's chi square test of independence. Now click OK and the results of the chi square test are produced in the output window. In this output window, the first table is called case processing summary and it shows that there are 199 respondents and there is no missing data. This is good and exactly what we should expect. The second table is the cross tabulation table. In this table, we have 77 male and 73 female who are zero smokers. We also have 14 male and 18 female who are recent smokers. And we have 6 male and 11 female who are legion smokers. Now you should compare the observed counts with the expected counts to determine whether there were more or fewer male or female who are zero smokers, recent smokers or legion smokers respectively. Here for zero smokers, we expected 73.1 male but we got 77 male and we expected 76.9 female but we got 73 female. This means that we had more male and fewer female than expected who were zero smokers. However, the difference between their observed and expected counts are small and so are not significant. Similarly, where we expected 15.6 male and 16.4 females as recent smokers, we had 14 male and 18 females, which means there were fewer male and more female as recent smokers than expected. But the difference between their observed and expected counts are small, so they are not significant. Again, where we expected 8.3 male and 8.7 females as legion smokers, we had 6 males and 11 females. This also means that there were fewer male and more females than expected respectively. Again, the difference between their observed and expected counts are also small, and so their difference is not significant. Basically, when you look at the male and female percentage status for zero smokers, recent smokers, and legion smokers, you will see that their percentage differences are small and this implies that smoking status is independent of gender. Now to confirm our interpretations, let's scroll to the next table called chi-square test table. In this table, you should only be interested in the row for Pearson's chi-square. On this row, the chi-square value is 1.953 with a subscript A whose content is expressed under the table, showing that we are in order. The degrees of freedom, DF, is 2, and the p-value designated here as the asymptotic significance level is 0.377, that is 0 0.377. Now, to make a confirmed decision, we have to look at the statistical decision rule for assessing if the test is significant for alpha value of 0.05. Of 5%. The rule states that if p value is less than or equal to 0.05, the test is significant. That means there is significant association or relationship between gender and smoking status. As if p value is greater than 0.05, the test is not significant. That means there is no significant association or relationship between gender and smoking status. Based on this, there is no significant association or relationship between gender and smoking status, which means smoking status is independent of gender. This is so because chi-square p-value, which is 0.377, is greater than 0.05. Now, let's scroll to the next table called symmetric measure table. 
The phi and Kramers V in this table provide the information on the effect size, which describes the degree of association between the gender and the smoking status. As you can see, the phi and Kramers V is 0 0.099 respectively, with the same p-value of 0 0.377. 0 0.099 is a very small value, and this means that there is no significant association between the gender and smoking status. Hence, smoking status is independent of gender. To graphically justify your interpretation, you should also look at the bar chart. On this chart, the smoker status is on the X axis. The blue bar is the male, while the green bar is the female. As you can see, there is no great difference in the height of the individual bar for zero smokers, recent smokers, and legend smokers respectively. All of these results show that we do not have sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So there is no statistically significant association or relationship between the gender and the smoking status. This shows that smoking status is independent of gender. This is how to perform chi-square test of independence in XPSS. I hope this video was useful to you because right now we have come to the end of this video and I hope you'll be able to replicate the procedure as demonstrated in this video to perform chi-square test of independence of your own data in SPSS. If you like this video and you want to see more video contents like this, please give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to my YouTube channel to encourage education and learning and so that we begin to send you notifications every time I publish new and useful content. Subscription is free. Thanks for your time and subscription and I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye.